Waiting Plan Commission meeting for Thursday, December 20th, 2018 is called to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, roll call, please. Commissioner Blanova. Here. Commissioner Creech is absent with prior notice. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Kalis. Here. Commissioner Powers is here and Chairman Rafato. Here. Uh, Mr. Robles, any changes to the agenda? Yes, we have one change for tonight. Docket number PC 18-19 for JV Global Services LLC at 150 Abbott Drive, minor change to approve site plan. Uh, the petitioner has requested that this item be tabled from tonight's meeting to allow them some additional time to address the comments in the staff report. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we have, we, uh, Mr. Secretary, we do have a citizen concerns and comments. Okay, um, citizens concerns and comments. Members of the public may address the Plan Commission with comments regarding only those issues that are relevant to the Plan Commission's agenda or topics that the Plan Commission has the authority pursuant to the Village Code to address. The chairperson or his or her designee shall strictly restrain comments to matters that are relevant to Plan Commission business and shall not permit repetitious comments or arguments. Members of the general public who wish to address the Plan Commission must sign a request to speak <coughs> Uh, form prior to the commencement of the public hearing. The person submitting a petition, concern, or other comment shall be allocated five minutes to present their points. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Ligori. <coughs> reminder, you have five minutes. Thank Hi. you. Good evening. Um, you will be looking this evening at the signage that, super exciting, that um, they're going to present to you. And I just wanted to give uh, just my two cents with it. Um, I think that there's a couple other areas in the town that we should consider. Um, Dundee and Schoenbeck Road is a main thoroughfare for the entrance to Wheeling. And I think we should take the opportunity to place one of those signs there as well as um, by Wolf and Palatine Road. A lot of people use this as access to our town, and so if you can consider that as well, I think it would um, benefit us greatly. That's it, thank you. Thank you. Consent items. <clears throat> Docket number SCB 18-55, Tracy's. 18 West Dundee Road, appearance approval of a wall sign. Thank you. And docket number SCBA 18-56, La Raza Dollar, 859 West Dundee Road, appearance approval of a wall sign. Uh, now, um, before, we, I, before I ask for a vote on this, uh, Steve, you know, that's the shopping center that you know, we've had issues with them in the past, and as you can see, that sign right there, if nothing gets cleaned up, um, it's going to be pretty embarrassing. So what do we have in place that will ensure that that facade gets cleaned up before another sign goes up there? Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner Rafato, the uh, staff report for this item does include a condition that the a facade must be uh, fully cleaned and restored before uh, installation of the sign as well as the um, village's sign permit also has that requirement uh, that is acknowledged by the um, applicant of the sign permit. So between the um, approval, the pending approval of tonight by the plan commission as well as the permit conditions, um, staff does have the necessary uh, ability to work with the um, tenant as well as with the landlord to make sure that this facade is cleaned and uh, is restored so that we have um, something that's uh, a lot better than the current image. So just for clarification, so they come in and they get the, when we vote on this, uh, it's a consent so it would be approved, when we <coughs> vote on this, they come in and they get their signed permit, correct? 
the uh, they have before we before we issue the sign permit they will have to demonstrate that they have um, addressed the condition of the approval Excellent. thank you very much that's mm -hmm. what I was looking for so do I hear a motion so moved second we have a motion by Commissioner Johnson second by Commissioner Kalis, Kalis. Mr. Secretary. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Kalis. Yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Powers votes yes and Chairman Rafato. Yes. Items for review, docket number 2018 30, House of Rental 318 North Milwaukee Avenue Special Use Site Plan Approval of a Tool Equipment Rental Facility with Outside Display or Storage. Mr. Secretary. Docket number 2018-30, House of Rental Lessee is seeking special use site plan approval as required under Title 19 Zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-06 Commercial Districts, Chapter 19-10 Use Regulations, Chapter 19-12 Site Plan Approval Requirements and Associated Sections in order to establish a tool slash equipment rental facility with outside display or storage at 318 North Milwaukee Avenue, which is zone B3, general, commercial, and office district. Standards for a special use. The zoning special use is defined in Title 19 of the Village of Wheeling Zoning as a use of parcel of land that requires review and consideration before approval due to circumstances or effects on the surrounding properties that may adversely affect them. In order to be considered for a special use, the petitioner is required to demonstrate through testimony to the Plan Commission at the public hearing why the request meets the conditions of the village code, including but not limited to how the proposed use will not damage the enjoyment or use of the surrounding properties. Prior to the public hearing, the petitioner provides written statements meant to show that the request for a special use meets the standards established in Title 19. The commission chairperson will typically direct that these statements be entered into the record without a full reading of them at the hearing. Based upon the testimony and supporting materials submitted, the plan commission will make findings in support of or against the petitioner's testimony and report those findings to the village board. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Steve, any, any, anything to add on this? Yeah, just a, a few minor comments in that um, with the special use and the site plan approval being sought, um, it, while there won't be any considerable changes um, being proposed uh, to the operations itself, um, staff recently discovered that the existing business did not uh, have the zoning approvals for the outdoor storage and display um, since the business received the original special use back in 1982. Uh, and that special use was for equipment rental service. Uh, to correct this violation, uh, the applicant is now seeking uh, the special use and site plan appearance approval tonight um, for the tool and equipment rental facility with the outdoor storage uh, or display. Um, and uh, uh, from staff's perspective, the use uh, you know, will generally continue as it has been uh, since that 1982 uh, special use approval. Great, thank you. Is petitioner here? Yes. Please come forward. <coughs> Will you be the only person speaking on this matter tonight? Um, Dave Keeler, manager there, he's also- Well, sir, if you could please stand up and just raise your right hand, both raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you give tonight to be the truth? I do. Thank you. So when you come up and speak, you give your name and business address, uh, and then the floor is yours. Uh, Chris Wright, owner of House Rental, 318 North Milwaukee Avenue, Wheeling. Great. Thank you. The floor is yours to explain the situation that we're in. Okay. Um, again, I think this was just... Uh, an oversight, you know, something from a long time ago was just brought to our attention that we weren't allowed to, you know, have outdoor storage there. So that's why we're here tonight. Um, I updated drawings, I updated site plans, I updated uh, all the information so that we could do the review and, and make sure that we're doing business correctly. Okay. Thank you. Um, anything else to add? Uh, staff would like to add that um, just this evening we did receive a revised site plan um, to address the uh, comment by the fire department's review uh, regarding access between the detached uh, garage and the parking spaces um, just north of the large warehouse area. As you can see with the um, new 
um, revised plan, um, the petitioner has indicated that there will be a 20-foot uh, spacing between the corner of the garage and this uh, space here. This is achieved by the removal of a parking stall. Uh, therefore, there will be um, three, uh, looks like two spaces rather than the three that were there. Um, in speaking with a fire, uh, I, we believe that this has addressed that concern, but um, you may want to consult with, with Ron over there. Um, typically, we, we don't like to see this middle of last minute middle of these plans, but in this case, it does address uh, the concern that was raised, and therefore, um, we have presented it to the Planning Commission tonight. Okay, thank you. <coughs> well, let's get to it. Ron, is, uh, have you seen this, Ron? Yes, I received that late this afternoon, as well as discussed it with the petitioner and fire department as agreeable to the plan as presented. Okay, all right, good. So we'll get that off the. Okay. Just checking my phone. <laughs> Could have been a Christmas song. Would have been that's a good that song. Been better if it was a Christmas song. A lucky can a man be? Is that what it was? Yeah. Good song. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with commission. Yeah, we're going to start with uh, Commissioner Powers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so the front the for the front parking lot will be restriped. Is that right? Are we restriping it? Um, or seal coating it? What are we doing with it? Because there was a mention of parking lot from seven to six spaces, um, not matching angle parking. So when I was over there a couple days ago, um, when we look at when I look at the site plan here, are, are those parking <coughs> spots at the north end of the site plan here? Are there is that like four or five different parking spots? Is that what the designation is there? For my reference, we have on the north end of that lot. There's you know along that whole wall. There's um, you know four spots there. Okay. Which we use depending on uh, whether it's equipment being put there or it's cars being put there. Okay, so um, so are we talking seven or six spaces? And in those seven <laughs> spaces are like they like the four on the north, the north end, and then um, the three behind the two or three behind the building and the angled spot. Is that is that the the parking that's considered meeting the requirement for this site? Do you know, Steve? Uh, yes, the the customer parking area is yeah. primarily located um, in the, the front of the building, which is the east side of the building off of Milwaukee Avenue there. Uh, I believe there is one ADA space that's in the back behind yeah. the gated area. Right. Um, so that serves as another a customer parking space. And then there's uh, in front of the gate, there are, of the four that are along the north, there are two that are in front of the gate. So in terms okay. of... In terms of meeting the, the minimum number of parking, they do provide that. And then they, as you can see, have additional employee parking well within the site. Okay. Can you describe, um, I know you mentioned some landscaping in the front. What, what were you planning on doing um, in the front of the property? I think you were talking about putting some kind of, those three shrubs there. What, what kind of shrubs are those? Do you know? Junipers. Junipers? Okay. So you plan on like putting three of them there and then like, Putting mulch in there at all? Uh, we basically just do a radius around the bush. A radius around the bush? Okay. Just wanted to check that. Um, where is the where is the equipment display area at the northeast corner of the site? Can you sh show me where that is? So basically, that the north end of the parking lot there. There's you know two spaces in front of the gate. It, so we would display equipment either up right in there, yes, okay, right, right in there, or back behind the fence, depending on what you know what customers we have for that day. Okay, so you would so you just pull out different types of equipment during the day just to have them on display, and then at night you bring them inside. Yeah, everything's brought in at night. So then it's either display or it's prepped for customers that come in. Okay. <clears throat> So do we have any kind of condition on, on this docket related to um, the striping of the parking lot? I just... Um, I believe there is um, no condition other than from what 
the fire department had indicated, which has been resolved. Um, but there wasn't any condition, any further condition. Okay, so, the, so yeah, so I guess you've identified where the um, the customer parking is. So you know, the, you know those designated spots. So I, I guess uh, I'm I'm fine with this, and I really at this point don't have anything further. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you. Um, I really don't have too much on this. <clears throat> Ron, you, you said with that change you're, you're happy with the access? Yes, it's provided enough space to get apparatus into the back area where the vehicles are stored if needed. And provided they don't leave equipment out like I don't know. Steve, can you call up the one photo that I'm looking at here? With the fence. Can you uh, put up that photo? Oh, oh yeah. Hi. Wrong way. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, Keep going. Keep going. Scroll up. <laughs> there it is. No, no, no. no not yet. Up. Oh, scroll up. <laughs> okay, we're done with the meeting. <laughs> here. There that, okay. that one. Okay, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Steve. <clears throat> now, they're going to need to be sure not to have stuff parked in the way. I mean, restriping is one thing, but when they've got that bobcat sitting there and something else in front of that, you're still not going to be able to get anything in there. That would be typical of any parking situation okay. where <laughs> people choose not to park between the lines. Okay. Um, that's all I have for now. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Kalis. Thank you very much. Uh, my only question slash concern was, like Commissioner Johnson, um, the equipment that's just clearly in the way of a fire truck getting in the back there, but I assume that would be either fire truck runs it over or uh, an enforcement <laughs> issue, I guess. <laughs> but. I think I can also note that the revised plan changed the plan for outdoor storage being in front of that building as well. Hold on. What sort of change? Oh, well, I'll ask. Okay. So this prior one had proposed storage in front of the right in front of the group. and the new one if i do this correctly yes. does not so that would also clear up that area if they comply with their plan so can you confirm that that this picture won't happen where there's a bobcat and a scissor lift or whatever that was yeah yeah i mean now that we're aware of that situation yeah the 20 foot between the garage there right. and the last parking spot just clearance for fire because okay you want them to be able to get in so your building doesn't burn down so um Cool, that's it, that's all the questions I had, thank you. Commissioner Blanova. Thank you. Um, if this uh, petition will be granted, um, as much as I know, there's not all, you also renting, not heavy equipment, you also renting uh, party equipment, uh, like infl inflatables, and I, I believe in a Skokie location, um, there is a picture that it's uh, up front. The question, should we expect something like that on your property as well? Um, as far as displaying of? Because on the website, it, um, it separates what, what, you do, what you're doing. But the, <clears throat> at the same time, it doesn't specify which location is strictly for, for this equipment or which location is strictly just for party uh, uh, equipment. Right. So all the deliveries are done out of our Skokie location. So anything that's placed for delivery would then be... Go, uh, come out of our Skokie. So technically in Wheeling, you don't have anything for pipe. Wheeling is a pickup location, so customers typically don't pick up, you know, the big water slides or big inflatables. They do have smaller ones they can pick up there. You know, they can pick up anything they can kind of fit in their vehicle. And you, you don't have any plans to display any inflatables on your property? No. Like in full length? Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so <coughs> I realize that You've been in business here for a long time, and you were supposed to stop your outdoor storage in 1985 and somehow got past the village. And, uh, you know, that's an enforcement thing that we should have taken care of. The, the, and you've been a good neighbor to the, the village. Uh, but my, my concern is the... Strong, uh, strong street side, the fencing, and actually the fencing around the whole piece of property. You know, we, we, I would like to see those things hidden. So I would like to see 
And then you've got a house right behind you now. And that house may not have been there when you went in, uh, when uh, you started here, but it's there now. And, and looking at the one picture, if you could bring that up, Steve, the one that looks into that one. So right there, you, you can see the house back there. Granted, now it is, it is wintertime, but I don't see any shrubs there. There's nothing there. And when you go along Strong Street, it, it even looks worse. And there's, there's plants, trees growing out of the, the fencing, and it just doesn't look good. So personally, I would like to see a fence, a new fence put in around from Strong Street through the back. And then, you know, since you're going that far <clears throat> on the side, on the north side where uh, the window and, and siding place is to make it look a little bit better. And <clears throat> because then at least, you know, those, those, those two, those look like wood chippers in the back there, those probably can't be lowered, those, uh, the chutes. Uh, you know, because, and granted, second floor, the house right there can see things, you know, on the second floor, you can't avoid that. Unless we put a whole dome over it, no. <laughs> um, but at least if they're in their yard, you know, they'll have something that, uh, you know, that will block some of that. And then especially on Strong Street. So I would like to see that fence, your existing, I think that's a chain link fence with slats in it. And then I would like to also uh, see the perimeter at least cleaned up on what is yours. I couldn't tell what, you know, what was part of House of Rental <laughs> and what was the neighbor or uh, even on the north side because all of the stuff was growing in. Uh, I would uh, definitely like to see that. And, um, I'll, you know, I'll take a poll of the uh, – Steve, what is the – maximum height that we can do a, like a um, a wood fence, a board on board fence, something like that. Right, given given the use, uh, the maximum fence height would be eight feet. Eight feet. Um, there already is a variation for the property that was granted back in 1984 to allow the fence to be on Strong Street, right along the sidewalk there, to allow it to be within the front yard setback. So the variance for that fence location has already been granted, but it did not specify a height. Okay. Um, so per, per code, fence height could be eight feet. Um, given that the fence is right adjacent to the sidewalk, uh, staff's concerned with a uh, fence being eight, eight feet tall, um, just given that that could visually look you know, like a large barrier to pedestrians walking along the sidewalk there and you know, at least for the fence section that's long strong, the staff would feel that a six foot tall fence would be more of a pedestrian scale and a little okay. bit, create and a more friendly go, environment. That could go eight feet. And then, yeah, once you, once you get past yeah, there, so. um, there's a debate on whether or not an eight foot fence along the, the joining line between them and, and between this property and Starbucks, whether or not eight foot would create a similar feel, but it's, it, it's not uh, pedestrian. Right at that point. Exactly. Exactly. Comments, sir. Um, the Strong Street, the approach on Strong Street, if you're, you know, heading eastbound, <clears throat> has quite a bit of landscaping. Uh, that used to be an alley. It was a 10 foot or 20 foot easement there, that ran behind the building. Mm -hmm. um, once that neighbor bought the easement, he did quite a bit of landscaping in there. Uh, there's evergreen. There's all sorts of hardy bushes down towards street level. So you don't see the yard from coming on the street at all. Well, we haven't had any complaints from the neighbor as far as the back end part, so we haven't addressed anything there. Well, I, I, I think it would, it, it would enhance the property, uh, especially along Strong, because I drove by it, and you could see through that, and it just, it, you know, it didn't. Uh, if I might, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm here with Chris Allen and Ben. And you are, sir? His attorney. Ah, okay, so if you're going to speak, please raise your hand. I don't think I'll have to speak, but if I do, I'll raise my hand. Okay. All right. We we're just discussing the fence. Um, north side, south side. On Strong Street. Yeah. On the perimeter. Perimeter, perimeter fencing. 
Um, yeah, we, we've cleaned up the, the, you know, the overgrowth and all the other stuff in that, in that area. And again, I felt like the, the landscaping that was done on Strong is, is sufficient for that site. Well, but I'm talking about a fence. I'm, I'm talking about removing the chain link fence and putting in a, a, a six foot wood fence along Strong Street and then going eight foot along the rear, rear building and then to the, then on um, adjacent to the next property next to you. So the whole fencing and the whole piece of property with uh, uh, a board on board cedar fence. So the whole border so here, could you here maybe and back up to here. And then you're also proposing on the north end as well? Well, or since you're going there, there that, you know, <laughs> I, I looked at that fence. I, I believe that's your fence. Uh, I believe it is. Uh, I, would, I would think it's yours. It's probably not the um, uh, windows and siding company. And since to be consistent for the whole piece of property going with the wood fence. We can put it in as a condition. Is that for security reasons or? Appearance and yeah, security. Uh, not, uh, not so much uh, aesthetics and uh, appearance. Uh, you've, got, you've got a residential, you've got a house right there. And I know they do have, they do have, um, uh, they do have landscaping. But obviously in this picture that I have on mine, um, there is some. But it's not, you know, if you can see right to the house right now, even during the winter, because those trees are, are fairly large, they really don't cover anything that's, you know, if you're sitting in the backyard. So to be, you know, for aesthetic purposes, I think we can have a fence put around the whole thing. Um, could we review other options? You say... You know, there's mesh screening, there's a bunch of other different options that you can put on an existing fence to freshen it up or make it look, as an appearance issue, better. Um, I, you know, I'll, I'll take a poll of the, of the, of the plan commission. Um, if, if we have options, then we'd probably have to uh, uh, continue this because I'd like to see what those options are. Commissioner Johnson? Well, yeah, I'd, I'd have to see what options right. there would be I'd, I'd like to see the fence improved mm -hmm. but if there's an easier way for them to do it that's acceptable okay. we should see it Commissioner Blanova thank you yes if there are other options I would love to see it. Commissioner Powers uh, something needs to be done with the fence normally we go board and board but I guess I'd be open to see uh, what other options there would be out there okay and Commissioner Kalis same. I'm open to okay. options. So, um, since uh, <clears throat> Chairperson Rapato, yes, some, you were talking about aesthetics, but is the concern also as far as direction to the petitioner um, screening? Is that one of your concerns as well? Screening, yeah. Okay. Yeah, screening, well, just screening and aesthetics. Options. Screening and aesthetics. I just would want to make right. sure that there are options included right. that it screen the property right. as well. I, I'm not enamored. I'm not really a, a fan of slats or mesh or anything on a on a on a chain link fence that's probably you know over 30 years old. I I don't know when that was was it. I I don't know if it was installed when <clears throat> you came into business there. Um, uh, or it was exist. I don't even recall what was <clears throat> there prior to house of rental. Um, I, I really don't know. Um, we've, we've had slats come in, but they just, I don't know. They, they probably fall apart and sooner than any type of wood fence. So that is where at. So with that said, um, and I'd like to give you time to um, review those. Uh, is it a continuation? Continue. Yeah, if, if they want to come back. If you want to come back. If they want to explore other options other right. than if the proposed to, board sorry, on board, right. then it's continuation. Right. Well, then we will review some options and... Okay. 
So, do I hear a, a motion to continue? What is the docket number? 2018-30. Uh, 2018-32. Oh, the next meeting is January 10th. January 10th. Yeah. So you'd have to have the you'd have to have your information uh, by the first week in January to uh, staff. <laughs> I would suggest yeah, longer than that. Okay. Okay, great. The 24th? January 24th? Yeah. No, uh, uh, longer. Okay, so you want to go to the next meeting, January 24th? Okay. Is that okay with you? And then you'd have to see when's your deadline for that then? That'd be the, the week uh, prior. So by around the 14th? Um, yeah, at the latest, yeah. Again, I need to push it back a little bit further than that. Okay. Um, February. February 14th. Okay. So moved. Second. <laughs> yeah. We'll all come with smiles and hearts. <laughs> yeah. If you have dinner plans, cancel them. <laughs> we have a motion by Commissioner Kalis, second by Commissioner Powers. Mr. Powers. Commissioner Kalis. Yes. Commissioner Powers votes yes. Commissioner Villanova. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. And Chair Nefato. Yes. We have a question. I'm sorry. What was the date, the date by which you'd have to... Uh, we'll plan. we'll touch we'll touch base with with you both to let you know coordinate. It's normally a week. It's ten days before that meeting. So It'll be we around February fourth. Generally, it's the week prior to the meeting, right. uh, but we can specify a date um, specific at that point. <clears throat> uh, not for continuance. No. I'm just I'm just doing it for you guys here. I'm talking, excuse me, we're talking to my client. We're just looking at dates. Valentine, uh, Valentine is pre might matter in all seriousness, so we probably would like to go to the next meeting. Uh, 20. 28th then. Can I get a new motion, please? Okay. So move with the new date. Second. Thanks, guys. Steven. Motion by Commissioner Powers, second by Commissioner Kalis. Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Powers vote yes. Commissioner Kalis? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. And Chairman Rafato? Yes. Okay. February 28th. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Calling docket number 2018-31, Kelly's Cafe, 30 West Dundee Road, special use site plan approval of a sit-down restaurant. Mr. Secretary. Oh, let's see. Docket number 2018-31, Kelly's Cafe, LLC, Lessie is seeking special use site plan approval as required under Title 19 zoning. Of the Wheeling Municipal Code, Chapter 19-06 Commercial Districts, Chapter 19-10 Use Regulations, Chapter 19-12 Site Plan Approval Requirements and Associated Sections in order to establish a sit-down restaurant at 30 West Dundee Road, which is zone B3 General Commercial and Office District. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Robles, anything to add? Uh, no additional comments apart from the comments contained in the staff report and just that the uh, staff report itself and the submittal of materials by the petitioner are made part of the record today. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? Please come forward. Hello. I assume you'll both be speaking on this matter. Sure. So please raise your hand. You swear a testimony you give tonight to be the truth. Yes, I do. Thank you. So as you come, as you speak first, if you can give your name and business address, I'd appreciate it. Thank Robert you. Stambolic. You can move, now move the microphone closer to you as you're speaking. Thank you. Robert Stambolic, 30, on the business that we're trying to get approved is at 30 West Dundee. Okay, great. Thank you. So the floor is yours to explain what you're going to be doing. Um, we're basically looking to put in a cafe, and I believe we have some samples of what it would look like. Thank you. Make sure there's enough. Wow, <laughs> yeah. oh, the 
this is different. Yeah, yeah that's the old different. one. That's the old plan. This is the old plan? Yeah. <coughs> I like this plan. I do too. Okay, so. Um, <coughs> Okay, so you this is what you're proposing to do. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Though this is not the right plan. That's, this is correct. Yeah, that's too bad. So it's not this one. No, it's not this one. Right. Okay. So just look at the nice. <laughs> the one that's included in the in the, the packet here that was distributed yeah. right now. Um, the seating was in excess of the amount of parking that's allocated for that uh, space, so they had to reduce the number of seats down. As a result, it, it, it uh, led to the plan that you see on the screen tonight and the one that was included in the staff packet. Okay. <coughs> Do you have anything more to add? Not really. Okay, great. Thank you. There is, so if you guys could just move to the side, there is somebody that w wishes to speak on this matter. Sir, is that you? Thank you. I'm sorry, I just, uh, so do you swear the testimony you give tonight to be the truth? I do. And could you uh, state your name and business address, please? Samuel Bobby, the business uh, address is uh, 18 West uh, Dundee Road. Okay, great, thank you. So, uh, Chairman um, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me speak today. Uh, we represent uh, the Tracy's brand. As uh, all of you know, you have given approval for us at that location, uh, which was the uh, docket um, 1855. Uh, the concern that we have, uh, and just as a background, as you already know, we're at 24 locations throughout the state of Illinois. We're considered uh, on the multiple locations front, uh, one of the best brands uh, that are in, in gaming. We're probably three doors down from this current proposal in docket 2018-31. Our concern is the proximity to this location. Uh, it would uh, heavily hurt our position as a gaming facility. Uh, most of our gaming facilities, um, we um, spend in excess of $150,000 in setting everything up. Uh, we've already exhausted about seven months to get to this process, and we're still in the permitting process. Uh, still, you know, we don't know uh, the petitioner, we don't know the owners, uh, and it's nothing against them. We don't know them at all. It's just in concern to what we can do uh, because of the proximity on the same uh, frontage. We want to bring that to your attention that uh, it probably would be you know, uh, extremely detrimental to us, but it probably hurt both institutions to have it so close to one another. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, we'll go to the commission. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you. Um, yes, we're very aware that this location is three or four doors down from the other one that's coming soon. And we have a lot of other cafes in town. Um, what makes this one unique? What is it makes it unique? It's basically a cafe set up within 1,000 to 1,500 square feet. I would say ours is unique because when we do build them, we build them with the best quality. But it's not that it means there's better slot machines because they're all the same, but as far as the offering. And as far as we enjoy being close to other people because if you look at any business, they always do better around other businesses. I mean, if you look at Las Vegas, they thought one casino. Well, they do good when they're all next to each other. So competition is part of business. And the, the food you're serving is just reheated items? Yeah, like light pastries, the basics, and basically whatever the customers would demand. You know, I mean, it's mostly light, though, and that's what kind of all the cafes do. But... You know, we have a menu there, and obviously we'll try to service what the customer's demands would be. I have a problem with calling this a sit-down restaurant when there's no tables at all. It, it's, <laughs> it's a bar and five machines. So I, I just... So could you explain that, uh, Mr. Rollis? 
With the um, definition of sit-down restaurant, which is what staff has identified this use to be, um, the definition does include uh, you know, service at tables. Um, however, that's um, more of a description as you look at the definition for a fast food restaurant or a tavern, for example. So uh, what delineates this as opposed to, as a sit-down restaurant as opposed to a tavern is that uh, a tavern, the sales of the alcohol has to be greater than the sales of the food items. Um, so really to call this a tavern based on the seating wouldn't, wouldn't address the definition of a tavern by zoning standards. Um, so in this case, we would, we, it's still classified as a sit down restaurant um, because of the way the use is being presented. In this case, it's a, it's a restaurant with food offerings. They're serving it at a, at a bar top <clears throat> or a high top versus at, you know, a standard table height. Okay, that's all I had, sir. Okay. Mr. Kalis. Thank you, Chairman. Um, first of all, I appreciate a 3D rendering. This looks very nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't match either of the schematics. <laughs> um, there's tables in the original drawing in this one. Um, there's machines. Right. There's so no, this is, is the, the one that's up on the screen is the one. Right. So yeah. even in this one, is that is there room there for a lounge or is it just the machines? Yeah, because everyone that's a basically what we use to show and we can like obviously this build. this could fit with five machines up front. Well, on that. Gonna, yeah, I mean, it's obviously that's the layout because that's a smaller footprint. Sure, I, it's a incredibly small space. So, I mean, you've done well to fit it in there. Yeah, it's um, in there. I mean, it will be in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm Echo uh, Commissioner Johnson. I'm unfortunately not seeing how this is unique. Um, I you used that word in your in your letter uh, that it was unique. Well, um, unique is again. It's going to be everything in there is going to be first class. I, I mean, appreciate it's one, that. It's one thousand square feet, and all thousand square feet will be beautiful. I appreciate that. Yeah. For for your information, that's pretty much what everyone says that comes with a cafe. So I'm just. I'm having a hard time reconciling what's unique about, so that's all um, about that. Uh, I also had a question about the kitchen, but it's basically not a full kitchen, right? It's just Correct. prepped foods, yep, Correct. okay. Um, yeah, again, love the drawings, looks nice, thank you for that. A lot of people don't give us a visual of what they're, what they're dreaming of, we so I really appreciate that. Um, I don't have any other questions, thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Blanova. Thank you. So. I don't want to really repeat anything, but at the same time, uh, this particular joint showing uh, that seating, but on our joint, we will have machines, right? There will be five machines, yes. I have our architect working on a layout of what this build out and kind of, kind of like the pictures you see now, mm -hmm. but focusing on this layout. But I, he... I didn't have time. He didn't have, because he's still working on it. I didn't have time to, he's been working on it for a as week. As far as the design? The design for this exact look of what <clears throat> Fixtures, flooring, you know, furniture. And what is this, sir? Furniture. You didn't give your name. Anthony Shea. Okay. Could you spell that, please? Uh, S-A-N-T-H-O-N-Y-S-H-E-A. -E okay. Thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you. So um, why not why not swap the I, I okay let me preface this are you going to have anything that will uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, screen yeah screen the machines or is it just going to be a window I, because it just doesn't. Uh, we could, most, of the, most of the time, most of the cafes that we've had come in here yep. have the, um, the, the, the games in the back and the food in the front with a couple of tables, lounge tables. But you've got this swapped, and I, I just don't, I don't like that look, and there's no screening. You're walking by, and that's what you're seeing. We could <laughs> obviously change it to whatever you like. Um, it's just, again, because of his 
tighter and a thousand square well, feet. Well, can you can you? Oh yeah, we can. I mean, can you swap the? Sure. I mean, the only thing that would be hard to swap is obviously the plumbing and the restrooms in the back. Yeah, right. No, I'm talking just where you have the seating for the food and the... The middle and the, the middle front. The middle and the front. Sure. Right. So that's something that could be done. We'd, I, but see, we would like to see that in a drawing. And then you said your architects are still working on it, so it's not... So this could change anyway. Yes. And even with this layout, it could change. And this, this has got to go before our village board. And the last thing I would want to see, even if we went with this, the last thing I would like to see is have something change in between now and when it goes to the village board. I think you were talking about getting renderings of this layout. Not renderings? Not renderings, not changing the layout. When he was talking about the architect okay. working on it. I can change, I mean, whatever you would like to see, if you'd like to see the bar in the front with the, you know, the machines in, in the, the middle. middle, we can do that as well. And that would be preferable to me. I don't know how the rest of the uh, board feels. I mean, that was a comment I had too. I mean, everything we've seen regarding this type of use um the gaming has always been screened and you know in towards the middle of the unit and the seating and food has been up towards the front that's right. what i've seen and that's what i'd like to see here too. that's not I, a problem i have four i had got our, my architect gave me four drawings layouts layouts and we agreed that maybe this might be the one, but if, if I can look at the other ones and get final okay. drawings for those as well after we present okay. them by you. So again, uh, Commissioner Kalis, your thoughts of moving the things around? Sure, yes. I <laughs> Commissioner Powers? If yep. there's to be a cafe, it should be switched, yes. Right. Um, Commissioner Johnson? If, if there is to be one, then yes. Okay. So with that said, um, this we're, we're going to have to continue this. That's fine. Okay. So to, as you heard in the previous docket, our next meeting is uh, January 10th. Will that work for you? Um, am, I, am I able to be here on behalf of him? Either way, January 10th is fine. I don't, I don't, we don't dictate who's, who has to be here. Okay. As, long as, somebody, yeah, okay. as long as somebody can make just, decisions, if there, yeah. if there are changes that we request in the meeting, in the meeting, as long as you can make those decisions, say yay or nay, whoever's up there okay, can perfect. be up there. So what you would like to see is obviously the front put in the middle, the middle put in the front, and then you said... You'd prefer seeing a design of that one. I think that the what the commission was commissioners were indicating was that they liked the renderings, but it'd be helpful to see the renderings of the actual floor yeah, plan you're going to be doing. Yeah. Is so with the tenth, you'd have to submit that first week of January. Is that enough time for the architect, or do you need to move it back to the twenty fourth? If anything was to change, I'm going to get on it tomorrow morning. If okay. anything needs to change, I'll associate with Steve. Okay. But and like I like to fine. move fast and that's fine. knows that so I'll get on it as quick as possible. Sure. And then before I go any further, I forgot to call on Commissioner Powers. I apologize. No sir. problem. Uh, you're aware that the site that that um <clears throat> property needs to be uh sprinkled, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Um do you have any other locations in the Chicago area? Yes. One in Oakwell. Open, we have one at Lake and Gary, which is in Roselle. Okay. And building one in Oak Brook Terrace. Okay. And one in Lily Lake. Lily Lake, okay. Glendale Heights. Uh, Glendale Heights. In, in your packet, you also mentioned something about televised sporting events and movies. Do you have, do you have TVs in your establishment? And do, are there, do, is this kind of like a similar footprint to the locations you just gave us? I mean, size-wise, do you, 
is there a plan to have TVs in there to show movies and events like that? It would be, yes, by the countries or by the sitting area or by the bar. But obviously, they're all different sizes. Okay. This one is smaller, but there will be obviously one, at least one TV. Okay. Um, I think, oh, last question. Why this particular location? I would say why not? Seems to be a great location. Great intersection. Uh, Wheeling is a great city. I'm from this area. And I mean, the machines do well in this area. So okay. I think it's a good location. All right. I have nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, and, and we'll bring a vote up to continue. But you then, you then just mentioned couches. So I, I don't. The seating area. So again, Again, so we're right now in this middle section here where you have the the counter and you've got one, two, three, four, five probably chairs, high top chairs. There's going to be TVs in there most Behind likely. Behind the bar or on the wall or something. Right, yeah, on the bar on the wall. Okay. And we do have TVs in others. We will fit a TV in there. And now obviously we'll have to change it. So that would probably mean that front area would be a little bigger. And that would be able, because we have some with, if they have the room to put a couch or two little couches with two chairs, all depending on the room. Okay, great. And then, and then think about, as, as you swap these, think about a, a separation, you know, some type of wall or yes, something, you know. I know exactly what right, you mean. Exactly. Some sort of fixture that right. breaks. Some type of part, uh, per partition, partition yeah. that would do that. Okay, great. So, I'm sorry, Mallory, you were negotiating a date. What was the new date? Motion to continue to January 10th. Okay, so do I hear a motion to continue to January 10th? So moved. Second. second. Motion by Commissioner Powers, second by Commissioner Blanova. Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Powers votes yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kalis? Yes. Chairman Nafato? Yes. Thank you, sir. Good. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Have a nice holiday. Thank you. Oh. Moving right along, docket number 2018-29 continued from December 6, 2018 hearing express auto title loans 353 North Milwaukee Avenue special use site plan approval of a short term lending facility. Petitioners here, sir. Thank you. And you are already sworn in. So if you could just give your name again and tell us uh, your updated plans, I would appreciate it. Um, I'm Roman Zilber, Express Auto Title Loans, 251 East Dundee Road. Okay. And um, I provide, we work, I work with Steve and we, figure, we addressed all the issues. Um, we decided to uh, not color the building at this moment, just keep it as is um, until further uh, permit and the weather permitting and um, about the garbage enclosure we're just gonna we're not gonna have that much garbage so we decided just to take it down clean it up and just to resurface and uh, keep the garbage inside the building um, for now and uh, for a landscaping actually what happened those bushes are actually not on our property they eye dot and uh, we can't do anything and we're gonna fix them up we're gonna prune it so we're gonna just make it nice weather permitting and um, about the size, I highlighted the um, office space that we're going to utilize for, for now. Everything else is just undecided for at, at this moment. So, so you're just going to have one desk in, in there? Or we're going gonna... to we, have a couple desks okay. for now. All right. So. Okay. Is that all, sir? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you mention the painting of the outside? We're just going to keep it as is for now. Okay. All right. Maybe that'll be your new logo, the white. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll start with Commissioner Kalis. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so you've worked with staff, obviously. Thank you for going through those details. Um, just to remove the garbage enclosure is fine. You don't actually have to have one. Is that... Yes, True. that's correct. Um, with this office type of use, um, most likely it'll be paper and it'll okay. probably be low volume, so it could be treated um, similar to uh, you know to other small offices where they could just wheel out a standard garbage okay. container or trash container like you would see in a residential Got area. It. And then in the future, if 
a future use to had a different use, then they would have to include the new right. lines with a trash enclosure, depending on their because it's a giant building. You know, that's more right. than right. Depending on the use of the future offices, we're yeah. gonna uh, yeah. ask for a permit to to build out yeah. uh, whatever. And that's required. not even necessarily regarding you. I'm just saying in the future of the village. In the future, yeah. yeah so, if okay. Something exterior, then they would have to do that. Come back for site plan approval. Okay. On that for plan commission review. Okay. And then. Um, there is another. That's all I have right now. Thank you. Okay, great. Commissioner Blanova. Thank you. Um, if, hypothetically, if you have a client with a vehicle who will give you a title, get a money, and um, never pay you back, Will you repossess the vehicle and put it anywhere on a lot, or you have a different? No, I have a repossession company who does it. They keep they a vehicle take. there. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, uh, I mean, I wanted to ask you last time, but I remember that building is small, and you barely had any parking lot. You never had cars there. Right. Okay, that makes sense. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Good question, though. Uh, Commissioner Powers, I got you this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in the staff notes, it mentions that. According to the zoning code, your rates and fees have to be displayed. How are you going to, what is the, I, I'm not really familiar, what, the, what is the proper way, how do you anticipate this doing a display like that? You know, it have never happened to me. I've been in drilling for 20 years. This is the first time I hear it. Um, I just going to put some kind of display, I don't know, 20 by 20, whatever is it. I'm not even sure what is required. It doesn't state anything. Is it a special particular size that it's supposed to be or just in a frame, there, standalone? There, yes, there isn't a size that's dictated other than the code requires that the, the rates and the fees be displayed. So what we could do is uh, work, with, um, work with the applicant to um, allow signage that's within the uh, regulations of window signage so that it's in the window and that um, customers could see that before they're entering the building, they could see what those rates are. And we can, and we can certainly work with, with uh, each other to make sure that it meets the size uh, requirements so that, that it's compliant window signage. Okay. Does it have to be in the window or in the build, in the office area? Yeah, um, I'd want it in the yeah, window. That's kind of what I was asking. It could be, uh, the assumption is, is that it'd be visible. Be, be visible. It, it doesn't really specify that, so it could be inside as well. Um, didn't we have? Uh, didn't we have a a place on Wolf Road? Yeah, I'm we sorry, did next to the church. Time. Yeah, right. Uh, that they had display exchange rates. Yeah, shipping yeah. rates or something. Like shipping that. Yeah. Shipping rates or something, yeah. and that was displayed outside. But I, but I think they wanted to do that. Yeah, they wanted to do that. So maybe you know. So work with staff. Right, we can on work that. on the option. You no problem. So. What condition are we putting in this docket that would trigger the building having to be repainted? Uh, there is no trigger other than the owner deciding whether or not he wants to actually paint it. Uh, if, mm. he, if and when he does, then he, before we can issue a permit to paint the building, he'd have to return to the plan commission for appearance review and, and approval of the new paint scheme. So would that also be addressed if, um, Another use we're going to be coming in for this same property since he's only using part of the building. If somebody, if he were to create another, you know, lease out another part of the building to somebody else, would that then appear before us to be addressed? If they're making exterior changes that would that would require a new door, new windows, new paint, whatever that may be, that would have to re that would have to come in front of the plan commission. So what, you're, so what you're saying is that even if a new business came in and said we're going to use this building, we have no jurisdiction to say, okay, well, we'd like to see the paint change. So what you're saying is once, once this, it's just going to stay as it is until, and if the, the, a petitioner or the owner decides to come in and ask us to change the color, is that right? Yes, unless, unless the, the, the paint gets to a point where it is, a clear, you know, property maintenance violation in which we would then enforce that. But in terms of general color scheme, whatever that is, it's subject to the, the property owner. What about what about the trash enclosure? Uh, the trash enclosure, uh, as being proposed, would be removed uh, and then restored. Um, and if a use, another use came in that says, you know, I got, I need a lot more trash, then what do we say as part of? The, our approval, we say, hey, now we think you need a trash enclosure? Yeah. 
Okay. Right. If it's a use that requires a special use that would go in front of the plan commission, okay. that would be included at the time. If the uses would be permitted and allowed by right uh, without plan commission review, and it would and still does require the exterior trash enclosure, that would have that exterior trash enclosure itself would have to come in front of the plan okay. commission for the for the appearance. So is any okay? My next, my last question is anything being done with the monument sign because that's. That's pretty insightly too, and everything around it. I mean, well, they haven't come before us for signs, right? So, if this gets approved, what happens to that sign? It can't stay that way, right? No, as it would, it would. Any new signage would come forward, and similar to any other sign, where it would be a, a part of the, the sign control board of uh, of appearance. So, um, the plan commission would review the new sign. The new landscaping, um, any upkeep or maintenance that has or improvements that have to be done to the sign would all be reviewed per a uh, sign permit request. Are you asking if we can make it a condition tonight that they actually change that sign? Because I don't, I don't know, because I, my, I, I just don't know if if this gets approved, then are we guaranteed they're going to come back to right. us for a sign? Because if they don't, I, I'm not well, a fan of the monument that sign that's there right now. I, 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 I just think it looks your, out of place. What's your concern? Well, just, you know, this, the sign that's on there, are they going to, are they going to take that out? They're going to remove the whole monument sign? Well, what are they going to do with it if well, they don't come to us for that a would sign? Be, well, they, well, they're, they're not going to keep. Are you going to, are you going to change the name of your? Uh, yeah, I'm going to. I was planning just to replace the name. That's it. I'm not well, planning so, to do anything okay, with the so sign. Your sign, though. So the monument sign probably needs work, and we've done monument. Ma right. so monument sign done. is which one? I'm sorry. I'm, the monument uh, sign is. That's the, the standalone. The one by the street. One? The one by the street. Okay. Okay, right. that one right there. Okay. So you can change I, the face there. Is, you know, can be changed, but we we would expect that to be repainted and maintained. Oh yeah, I mean, I would, I definitely will do it. Yeah. So, but to the point, the the sign on the wall is a non um, is a non permitted sign. Right. We do not allow can signs anymore. Oh, okay. Okay. So, just as a heads up, when you if you're going to remove that, then to Commissioner Powers' point is that then you're going to have maintenance underneath that, but you cannot replace that. Our our code is can signs are not permitted as it is right there on the wall. Okay, so I would have to change this. Okay, that means right. I would work with it. That's yeah. fine. Okay, That's so no but, problem. but Commissioner Powers, that would have to come before us again. Right. You know, and unless he wants to change his name to CarQuest Auto Parts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, at this point I have nothing else. Okay. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you. Now, one more time on the trash enclosure. You're going to mm -hmm. remove that and just pave the. Uh, I'm going to just. I mean, it's. I'm not sure if I would be. Uh, I'm going to try to remove it right now, just the enclosure. But to clean it inside, it's kind of it's all frozen. So I'm, I'm going to try to see how it can be done. But I'm going to try to like weather permitting. I would say I'm going to just fix it, fix it up, everything. Do you know if that's asphalt? This, uh, this is asphalt underneath, but it, I, on top of it is like a dirt and rocks right, right. and everything like oh, that. Yeah, so we could put a condition in there that it's got to be cleaned up by the spring. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's can't perfectly do any fine with me. Now I have no, no right, issues yeah. with that. Okay. Um, the one other thing I would like to see as a condition is to paint that exterior man door on the north. Or south side? Yeah, it was a part of the that plan. Yeah, I was planning to, to okay. paint it. Because yeah, that looks terrible. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I got nothing. Thank you. You, got nothing. you said a bunch, so you had to have some. <laughs> you said nothing else <laughs> ah. other than that. So uh, I've been there a couple of times. <clears throat> there are a number of uh, trucks there from Horker mm -hmm. and then I keep on saying, seeing one from, uh, is it AAA, I think? Uh, a AAA truck is there, too, just sitting there? Just sitting there. I think with the driver. I drove a couple times. He's just sitting there. I think they're just waiting for the calls, I would say. Okay, but I don't even see a driver in it. I, know, I, I mean, I don't know, but I've seen a the driver there. Oh, you've seen a the driver there. So are those, <clears throat> are those 
truck's going to stay there? Do you have an agreement with uh, Mr. Horker, who's right down the street, that they're going to stay there? No, I don't have any agreement with him, no. I mean, is that, I mean... So if, there's, if, if it's a new property owner and there's no agreement, then those would have to be removed. All the, if there's um, unoccupied vehicles or vehicles being stored off-site, um, they would have to be removed. So is Mr. Horker aware of that, that those would have to be removed? I have no idea. I didn't talk to him. So you don't like them there, or what is that? Um, well, I mean, is there an issue or anything like that? And I, well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not certain that they can be used as, as a storage area is what I, I think. You, you can't have that. It, it's similar to the uh, house, of, house of rentals that we just went through is, is that, um, you know, they needed a special use for the outdoor storage right. of equipment. Similar, similar vein here is that, you know, there, there isn't uh, an existing approval for outside storage. It's just for the, for the existing auto parts store. Right. Special use now would be for the, uh, for the title loans um, and, and purely that. And, and any kind of vehicles that would be outside would be those customer vehicles, employee vehicles, things of that nature. So yes, they should be removed because that's not what you, we're not going. You're not asking for out, out, outdoor storage. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, I have nothing else. Uh, Steve, you want to go through what our um, conditions are? Yes, so ex condition number one is prior to occupancy, the man doors on the north and south building facades and the bollards surrounding the building shall be painted. Number two, prior to occupancy, the trash enclosure shall be removed and the pavement below shall be repaired. No, it's later, prior to spring. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to change that. Uh, yeah, I don't think it has to be prior to occupancy, okay. but it's got to be removed by the spring. And then by, do you want to establish a date? Um... What's the first? Uh, what's the first day of summer? Uh, uh, how about how about May? April thirtieth. Later than okay. Okay. April thirtieth. Okay. All right. So that condition reads that um, condition number two: the trash enclosure shall be removed, and the pavement below shall be repaired no later than April thirtieth, two thousand nineteen. Uh, condition number three: a new certificate of occupancy is required, and uh, condition number four is that all existing uh, commercial vehicles uh, shall be removed from the site. Okay. Now, are they touching up all of the pavement or just fixing potholes and the trash enclosure or? As it's written right now is that the pavement below within the trash enclosure shall be repaired. Uh, there, is a there is a comment from engineering that says that there's a few potholes within the uh, within the parking lot that should be repaired, uh, but that would be um, that would be part of the standard permitting permitting okay. of the uh, site. Okay. I mean, because if you, if you look at that picture right there that's up on the screen, I mean, it, the, the pavement looks in pretty bad shape. Well, that's that's not an area that gets a lot of traffic, though. So I guess I'm okay with that. So we got all those. So do we hear? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Blanova. Mr. Secretary. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Blanova. Yes. Mr. Kalis. Yes. Mr. Powers votes no. Chairman Rafato. Yes. Thank you. You'll have something to sign. And you can be on your way. Thank oh. you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays. You. Motion to close. So moved. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. We'll use this. We'll be in touch about the the board, the upcoming board meeting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. We need you to sign something. What do you got? Oh, oh, there we go. Thank you. Sign those two right there. Same on each one. 
and you can take one copy. Thank you, sir. Okay, so docket number PC 18 19 JV Global Services LLC. Uh, this is a uh, um, is it a continuation? No, it's a uh, just tabling it. Tabling, tabling it. Do I hear a motion to table docket number PC 18 19? So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Powers, second by Commissioner Johnson. Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Powers votes yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Blanova? Yes. Commissioner Kalis? Yes. Chairman Rafato? Yes. Okay, docket number SCBA 18 57, Village of Wheeling, appearance approval of gateway freestanding signs. Yes. Thank you, uh, Chairman Rafato. Uh, staff is seeking appearance approval of. The, of for the new design of the village's gateway signs to replace those existing signs that you see throughout the village. Uh, as the plan commission recalls, the gateway sign design was first presented to the commission uh, during a workshop back in the spring of 2017, and then again in the fall. Uh, the proposed final design continues that progression from those previous drawings uh, and, have, and have been refined into two design options. Uh, both options continue with the eight foot diameter wheel uh, to serve as the base of, this, uh, of the sign structure uh, with a single-faced uh, sign panel attached to the front. So it would be a single-faced, uh, single-view sign. Um, the difference between the two options, in this case, option A and option B, is that uh, the, is the primary appearance of the wheel itself. Um, option A is a darker version, and the option B being a lighter version. With option A, um, this darker material finish is called uh, Corten steel, and it has an oxidized finish to create that, uh, that kind of bronzed uh, appearance. Um, this is a new material that is being proposed for these signs, um, which, is, uh, which was suggested by the village's sign contractor. Um, the previous proposed dark color scheme was a, was a painted bronze finish. This is a natural oxidized finish of, of the metal material. Um, and it's actually the same material that's used on the signs that are at Friendship Park. So it's, a very, it's, it's, a very, it's consistent with, with what we've used elsewhere on Village property. Um, the lighter finish design of option B is a, a stainless steel option, and you can see it just creates a lighter, a lighter finish there. Um, there will also be new landscape uh, design for the signs. Uh, that focuses on, a low maintenance, on low maintenance materials with decorative grasses, shrubs, uh, limestone, um, as well as uh, just mulching area. And um, this allows us to kind of vary the landscaping between uh, the various signs. Um, there is a singular deluxe landscaping plan, uh, and this is going to be utilized for uh, sign number four, which is the sign that's located in the median on Milwaukee Avenue, uh, just south of Lake Cook Road, uh, near the Weston Hotel. Um, also low maintenance, uh, but includes, as you can see, a larger quantity of plantings as that sign, that particular sign is kind of the marquee sign for the village there. Um, there are 12 signs in total uh, located at key areas in the village, and again, these are, these are 12 locations of existing signs. Um, staff is also exploring the possibility of a 13th sign, um, but uh, we're working on uh, some logistics with that location, and the final location uh, will most likely not be identified or, or finalized until after the sign design package is, is approved. Um, so that, that 13th sign, if it does happen, would, would be identical to all the other signs, no, no new features. Um, so. Um, it would be, uh, it wouldn't have to come back for, for appearance review for that 13th sign. But we don't know where that is? Uh, where, where we're identifying is West Dundee at the eastern entrance to West Dundee. Oh, yes. Eastern uh, or west? East? Western. 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 Western entrance of West Dundee. Um, so we're kind of looking within that area to identify some of the options, but it's Don, not. is your backyard open? Yeah, mounted on that village fence, huh? <laughs> it's well lit over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah with yes. the new street lights. So that's, that's where we're looking, but there's some challenges with that, so we're not sure if that will ultimately be, de be determined. Um, so based on, on the appearance and the durability of the Corten steel material, that option A, uh, that's the one that staff prefers, uh, and that's the one that's, that's being recommended in the motion tonight, um, but obviously open to a plan commission discussion and any questions you may have with this. Yeah, I think he's with the sign company. Right. Do you have anything to add, sir? 
Uh, and if you could state your name, please. Yeah, Brian Newton, Parvin Claus Sign Company, uh, Carroll Street, Illinois. Okay. Uh, we have worked with Wheeling in the past. We actually did the sign that's out here uh, okay. ten years ago. <laughs> um, Holy cow. I've been working with uh, with Andrew and uh, John Sandalis, uh, Andrew Jennings, and we've been really kind of trying to get down to a, a concept that I think really identifies the nostalgic appearance of the wagon wheel. And I know that uh, staff was in between both of these these designs, and I'm, I'm glad to actually hear that uh, the preference is with the core 10 steel. Uh, I, I personally feel that that's a better better look. It's 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 more authentic, um, and just to be very clear in terms of the, the oxidization process, is that it's actually a rusting process, uh, but the rusting stops after a certain period of time. After a number of years, it will settle in, and so it's going to give you a nice bright orangish kind of a rust color, which is really, really cool. Uh, it's a structural material. Um, the material has been around forever. It just hasn't been used in architectural settings as, as more frequently as what it, you're seeing it now. You're starting to see it kind of pop up all over the place. It's going to give you the contrast that you're looking ultimately for with the name of Wheeling and ultimately illuminating those as well. Uh, we're trying to pick up some of the lighting as well on, on the spokes as well as the actual name. So they'll really pop. Um, so if there's anything that I can also add to it as far as maybe the differences between the two, and this is obviously information that you guys are not privy to at this point, is that the quartz and steel is actually a more affordable option uh, as, as compared to the stainless steel. Uh, the stainless steel is going to look really great on day one. Uh, it's going to have that nice great sheen to it. You're going to pick it up on car headlights, stuff like that. But over the course of time, that's going to kind of dull out. And so you'd have to go out there and kind of polish it up a little bit to try to get it. So it's going to have a little bit more maintenance, whereas with the Core 10, it's going to naturally weather, and it's going to sit without need of uh, maintenance on it. So I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that as well. Um, there is budgets in for the landscaping. There's currently existing landscaping there. Our intent is to take out the existing landscaping, utilize what we can as far as some of those planter bed rocks, uh, especially with the height. The height of the existing signs is something we don't want to lose. Um, I, we have uh, actually surveyed all of the locations. All of them are in great shape. We don't have to worry about anything as far as setbacks. Um, and the signs are actually uh, IDOT uh, breakaway uh, compliant, so something also to consider. Uh, one location, sign number 10, is currently utilizing solar, and we've been ex exploring um, some of the options there. And uh, with some of the new um, material suggestions that we've come up with with the uh, Core 10, uh, the pricing has actually come to be a little bit more favorable. That might be an option to consider in, in the existing uh, um, proposal that's already been approved. So there, there might be some room to, uh, to consider that. So I just wanted to give you at least a, a little bit more background, and I'm obviously here to answer any questions that you guys might have uh, before uh, adjourning. Great. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> let's go with Commissioner Powers. Uh, and just as a heads up to everybody, I'd like to hear your preference. I mean, because ultimately uh, staff has made a recommendation, but it's up to us to decide what, uh, what option uh, we're going to go with. So, so if you state that, too, and then any other comments. Commissioner Powers. Uh, I'll go with option A, and I'm glad to hear that um, one of the citizens came up and asked about Duddy and Schoenbeck, and it sounds like we're, we're uh, looking into that, so that's good. Um, the only other question I have with option A is, is the, the outer side of the, the, the actual wheel, not the spokes, is that, is there any kind of like outline of like black on there, or is it strictly uh, from the spoke out? There? I mean, you won't, there's not going to be like a black stripe like to outline the outer end of the wheel it's just going to be it just it's just that material all the way out to the end is that yeah. what it is exactly right it's it's going to be a fabricated material everything you see as far as the wheel is concerned will be core 10. okay so from the back side of it it'll just look like a core 10 wheel mm -hmm. outline from the front side of it you obviously see the sign panel um, but nothing as far as the returns of the wheel, the outer rim, nothing as far as the returns of the actual spokes. That's actually a solid material. Uh, you won't see anything other than just rust, the okay. rust color. Uh, that's really all I had. Thank you. Sure.
Commissioner Blanova. Thank you. Uh, I agree. Option A is, uh, if it's consistent, I like that much better than uh, the other. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson. Uh, definitely option A. Now, the, the spokes, are, are they narrower than, I think it showed six inches thick on the wheel, so they're, there's a three-dimensional effect. A absolutely. Okay. Yep. Um, and can you describe the lighting? Because on option A, the, the night view looks different than on option B. It looks like it's more than just wheeling that's lit up. It is still just wheeling. The only difference between option A and, and option B is is the material of okay. the wheel. Uh, the lighting, is, the intent is for uh, individual illuminated reverse lit channel letters. So essentially what that is is the light is going to be on the background. So it's going to be more of a floating halo appearance. And there's no spotlights, like almost looks like coming from the sides on, on that there are picture. intended to be spotlights oh, there are yes spotlights. the the intent there was to try to pick up some of the dimensions of the spoke itself so that at night you're not just seeing wheeling but you're actually going to see the entire wheel oh. so you're going to get the impact of wheeling's uh, illumination with a little subtle kind of glow okay. of the entire yeah, thing it's not going to wash out the, no. the wheeling part no um That's it. Thank you. Yep. Commissioner Kalis. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I love the contrast of A. I will choose A. I was a little bit concerned it would look a little dingy. I, I get that it's a wagon wheel and it's authentic, but the fact that you said it kind of pops with the, the bright orangish sort of rust, um, I, I know that in artwork, art rust can look pretty cool. So I'm fine with A. Um, are we not including a population portion of the signs this time around? It was omitted in a, in a meeting that we had originally. We were trying okay. to minimize the amount of exterior copy. Okay. Are we putting population signs elsewhere, or does it not matter? Is it? Um, my only understanding is that we weren't including it okay. on the, on the uh, gateway signs anymore. It's not a required for a village or anything it, it's to display not, it? Okay. No, it's not. It's, it's just usually informational. Yeah, um, it always changes. So. It, it changes all the time. I think from a long-term maintenance we don't have to continuously replace the panel or, or anything like that. That it's just yeah. everybody's got it. every every time there's a birth in the <laughs> city, <laughs> yeah. they're going to erase it yeah. and yeah. add one. Blackboard. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Chalkboard. Chalkboard, there you yeah. go. <laughs> um, and then I am also excited that there's a consideration for Dundee. It seems strange that we'd be building all this up and not welcoming people on the same road that we're highlighting across all of northwest suburbia. Well, I'm sure that's an issue of accessible space <laughs> well let's just move your fence in yeah <laughs> well it's on the wrong side of the road for coming in <laughs> um so anyway i i would love to see one on dundee because it's our it's our thoroughfare so that's but looks great thank you you bet i too i mean uh, so we were unanimous on option a which is great <clears throat> my uh and I, I mentioned this to steve the um the lighting the ground lighting, those are LEDs, right? Correct. So, and, and what made me think about it is when we just had this big storm, all the light, all the traffic lights <laughs> didn't burn out because the LEDs don't produce right. enough heat. Right. So if we have a snow like that, are we losing all the illumination on the, on the, on the signs? In fear of them potentially being covered by the snow. Yeah, because they don't they don't burn they don't burn off like a regular old incandescent. Yeah, you but, can't even see the lights. Yeah, the stop lights. Couldn't even see dangerous. the stop lights for yeah. days. Right. But most of the external illumination with the uh, the spotlights these days, they do have a protective coating over the top of them. Um, I can't guarantee it, especially with this last one, because it was snowing sideways and it was hmm. wet and it right. stuck to everything. I mean, talking about power lines and everything else that was down, so I can't guarantee you that. Um, I don't think you're going to have a problem for the majority of it, but, you know, you might have to clean the lenses off. I, I don't know. I, I can't. So that's going to be a maintenance issue then? It, yeah, in terms of the ground spotlights, and, and <clears throat> one of the benefits here is that because the wheeling... Uh, copy itself will have that reverse uh, channel lighting that will still be illuminated and that won't be affected by the lighting so worst case scenario 
you will still have some illumination on the sign. Right. And, you know, as, as things calm down from a snow event, you know, we, we could talk about, you know, you know, public works could go out and start clearing right. those up. So um, <laughs> it's not like it would be totally black Right, and that's After my concern. That, right, and that's it, that's my concern have, as we yeah. go through. It, it really becomes more of a tolerance issue, you know, right. because you're still going to get wheeling will illuminate, right. and the, the illumination from car lights is still going to you know pick up the bronze true. or the, uh, the that, rust. That, that's true too. So right. it's just you're going to lose a little bit of the impact should we get a storm like that again. Yeah. Well, know. and the reason one of the uh, apparently, you know, when this whole thing happened, when all the accidents occurred, apparently there is a light now. That actually has a heater in it mm. on these LEDs. Mm. That um, <laughs> that you know, there's of course there's a cost, and yeah, it kind of defeats the energy savings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably, yeah. You, you know, you're probably right, right. but <laughs> you you know, in, in traffic lights, it's I guess it's sort of important instead of you know, and you know when they say you're supposed to treat it as a stop, but as you can see, there were so many accidents yeah. that, you know, yeah. hey, this is my road, I'm going through it anyway. So that was just my concern. Sure. But that's something that mm -hmm. maintenance will have to take care of and mm -hmm. all those, you know, Mr. Janik's group will have to take care of that. But it's something that I think we, we need to discuss. So Yeah, that's okay. fair. So we're optioning. So just a, a, a question, um, number 10, which is on Milwaukee Avenue, and it looks like it's right by, it's right by Milwaukee. I am sorry, Chicago, Chicago Executive Airport. Airport. Um, that that sign exists now. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Whew. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It, it, yeah, it did oh, get hit. It was hit. It was hit. Oh okay. Yeah. Was that from the storms? Um, it was around that time. It was yeah. Okay. Oh okay. Because yeah. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't recall. I was surprised we had twelve. You know, but then again, I don't look at them because I live in Wheeling. I was really surprised. And um, well, one, two, and three are so close together. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, because you go in and out of in and out of town. That's interesting. But um, Ms. Lagori, who was here, mentioned um, uh, Schoenbeck and uh, Dundee, which I think you're looking at. But then she also mentioned Palatine and Wolf. Has that been explored at all? Well, Palatine and Wolf would actually be Prospect Heights until you get further. So I, I am sort of surprised, though, that we don't have anything like even on Wolf Road, even south of south or north of Palatine Road. I don't know because, um, you know, on the on the west side of Wolf Road, that's Wheeling, uh -huh. and then once you get like where that that on this drawing right here that we have up. The black line going east and west that you know dissects uh, the airport. <laughs> I'm surprised that there's well, nothing there. Number twelve is at Camp McDonald and Wall. Yeah, that's that's really, but that's way down there. If you get off yeah, of Palatine that's, Road, that's where Wheeling starts. Um, yeah, but if you get off of Palatine Road, I mean, look at look at where you got you got number five. That's in Wheeling, and you know that's doesn't necessarily start there. I, you know, maybe if we could consider something around there. I, I'm not certain if, if anybody's investigated that, but something that um, could be something that goes on there. But anyway, so that's it. Uh, thank you. Of course, they, they My look. Pleasure. They, they look. They look great. So, do I guess we need a motion? Correct. That we're. I, I just want to clarify. There are three conditions that are in the staff report. And they are? Uh, excuse me. Uh, the first one is fabrication and installation shall be subject to final approval of the village board. Uh, the reason why it's in there is because typically the plan commission would have the final determination on sign appearance. Uh, but in this case, the village board um, has to authorize the final contract and, and payments sure. of these. So uh, that's the reason for that. Number two is that uh, the signs shall be fabricated using design option A, uh, which we've all discussed. And three, that any additional signs um, will match the approved design package, uh, can be fabricated and installed without further appearance approval. Great. Okay. Sorry, do, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Powers. Mr. Secretary. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Powers votes yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Kalis. Yes. And Chairman Rafato. Yes. Thank you. Right. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. For providing yeah, thanks for coming additional in. input. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice holiday. Okay.
So, other business. Uh, approvable minutes December 6, 2018. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Powers, second by Commissioner Bonova. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Other business, Steve, 2019 Planning Commission meeting calendar. Yes, just uh, the presentation and uh, hopeful approval of the 2019. 2019 uh, regular meeting schedule for the plan commission as you can see the dates here as we've already discussed we have some items coming back to us on the 10th <coughs> as well as already down into February so or March that that was so uh, February February, February 20th. Oh, 28th correct correct so uh, this is the schedule here you can see similar to this year the last four uh, meetings the the two in November and December are going to be off the standard uh, rotation right. yeah. so those are the first and the third First and the third instead of normally second and second and fourth, correct. Right. Okay. All right. Any comments? Nope. 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 Okay. Other business? Uh, do, we want to do, we, do, we do we have to do a motion? I don't know. Yeah. Why don't we do a motion? Let's just do for one. Just for okay. Motion. Official purpose. Yeah, that's true. Motion to approve the 2019 meeting schedule for the plan commission. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Kalis. Mr. Secretary. Please. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Kalis. Yes. Commissioner Blanova. Yes. Commissioner Powers, both yes, and Chairman Rafato. Yes. It's official. And um, was that, that was in the packet? Yes. Could you send out just a separate one? I, I have a heck of a time trying yeah. to just take that sure. out and mm -hmm. just send an a email. separate yeah, email. Mm -hmm. If you just send that one yeah. document to us, that'd be great. Of course. Okay, other business, uh, any, anything else, uh, Steve? No other comments. Okay, Commissioner Johnson. Um, see, they're really moving out on the uh, 500 project over here. Looks like the parking garage is almost done. Um, and I mentioned to some people that uh, there's a for sale sign on the Kmart property. Yeah. So, huh. maybe we'll- Did you know that? There's a sign there. Did you get approval for that? Because it's a big sign. Yeah. <laughs> look, look. Yeah. yeah. It's a big sign. Maybe it's Brooks Last Hurrah. But it's a big um, I think that's it. Okay, cool. Commissioner Bonova. Um, since uh, we're talking about downtown making Can you improvements. Put your microphone closer and speak louder. Uh, we're talking about the improvements and um, the. Um, our downtown area, the projected downtown area. Can we do anything about um, the Jimenez store, for example? They have those signs, like with the markers, that sells this, sell that. It really looks, it doesn't look awesome, but can we do anything about it in the future to make sure that we don't have so, any signs like that? Again, that that is enforcement. Uh, they have all of their windows covered. Uh, that's Jimenez grocery store. They have their whole windows covered. And it's probably out of compliance yeah. because you can only have a certain amount of your window, and it's a good point. So, well, I'll pass that along to. Thank you. If you could, good point. Thank you. That's Anything all, else? That's the only thing that bothers me. Commissioner Powers. <laughs> Happy holidays. That's it. Commissioner Kalis. Thank you. Um, I was overly excited to see the signs show up for the Wheeling Town Center. They're looking good and I'm excited everyone I talk to um, that I mentioned I'm a plan commissioner or they know I live in Wheeling they say that they're super excited about everything going on and what they're hearing about so I think the buzz is going around town around other towns that we are moving and shaking so I'm proud of the village and uh, for everything um, going down Dundee into Buffalo Grove they did a new signage of that whole the, the, the strip mall with the aquarium place um, I'm just wondering is there a process in place to help owners of, of strip malls to reface all the sign? Because some of our strip malls are just old looking and they could use a, I don't, what's that? Uh, Facade improvement. Yeah, right. You, you know the strip mall I'm talking about on yep. Buffalo Grove? Yeah, it looks uh, Grande great. Jake's is. Yeah, Jake, Grande Jake's, right? Or was. Was. Oh. <laughs> it's closed what? down. Oh, that's sad. Really? Yeah. Um, but I, I saw so somewhere I, that they're moving. So. Oh. To Wheeling, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Um, 
But I just I love that they redid the whole right. the whole mall. It's all unif. It mm-hmm. kind of looks boring in a way, but it's clean and I love it. And there's so many strip malls in we so many. I get I don't know how many, but Wheeling could certainly well, use some of that. It is available. They just have to want to do it. it is it Can we help it? them in any way? <laughs> encourage is it them? or force them? No, it's anywhere, <laughs> isn't it? Is it? I don't know. If yeah, it's inf- I don't know. It's probably not an enforcement thing, but no. Um, there are there is a facade improvement that would include like, not only the facades like a signing. grant for them I don't know like yeah. is there and it's just uh, you know property owners applying uh, to to participate and uh, for example Old Munich Inn did receive the facade improvement sure. grant money um, as an example so there there are places that do take advantage of it but um, you know it is something that we could look at you know getting. Uh, greater exposure to yeah is there anything can we invite them to you know say here's what's available look what happened over there look how nice it is would you like to do that i don't know we can talk about if there's a way to communicate that better too so just freshen up the town so much if some of those strip malls would do that so that's all i all had to say thank you um i would like to wish everybody a merry christmas and a happy new year and thank everybody on the plan commission for a great year there was a lot accomplished this year and um, a lot of excellent things that are going on in the village and will continue to go on in the village and we were very important parts of that and Ron thank you and Kyle you're not here and Mallory and Steve and Brooke thank you for all the work that you guys put into it to put together packets for us I know it's not it's not easy uh, and thank you for that uh, a comment um, about the uh, uh, the gaming cafes. I was ha- happened to talk to somebody recently, and uh, they're they're a restaurant owner, and they own gaming cafes. And uh, what the gentleman brought to light tonight was um, something that was just told to me last week. He said. They would prefer to be around other gaming cafes because what what's happening is they're turning into mini casinos and that's what I don't like is that somebody gets in the car doesn't have to move their car and go to multiple places so they crawl from one to another it's like a, <laughs> yeah. when right, you mentioned exactly. when you mentioned Las Vegas I don't you know, I don't know if he realizes that's not necessarily what the village is going what, what for. we're going for. Right, and that's and, and exactly that's what we you know I four doors apart and you know so we do have that, but that's some of these gaming owners they much prefer that. That's interesting. Yeah, so that's something that I think we need to look at as we're going in, into the future on these things. So. Again, thank you. Uh, happy holidays. And um, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. See you next. Oh, I will not be here January 10th.